Hi, my name's Philip Brown, and I'm the Bearded Math Man. I'd like to show you how to factor quadratics. At least, the first part of it, anyway. So quadratics. Those are polynomials with a degree of 2. Means the biggest exponent is 2. And the WTF means, what the factor? Because, when you get stuck in algebra, or even calculus, it's often a good to, uh, idea to just go back and factor something, because factoring takes something big and breaks it apart into, well, smaller pieces. And smaller is easier to deal with. Let's do a little housekeeping first here. Let's talk about what's going to happen. Um, the first thing you always want to check for is to see if there's a common factor that you can factor out of all of the terms. Now, a lot of times we get out of the habit of checking that, and then when we get stuck, we go back and look, and then we feel kind of foolish because, well, it was there the whole time. Now, the second thing is, let's get a way to talk about the terms of a quadratic. AX squared plus BX plus C. Now, if we had 4X squared minus 2X plus 5, well, then A would be 4, B would be negative 2, and C would be 5. These are the coefficients. So if I talk about B, you know I'm talking about the coefficient of X, the number in front of the X. And, and A would be the number in front of X squared, the coefficient of X squared. If A is 1, so if the first number, if the number in front of the X squared is 1, then what we're going to do is we are going to try to find a value of M and a value of N. And what's going to happen is M times N will equal C, but they'll add together to make B. We'll make that really explicit in just a minute. But like our first one right here, the two numbers that multiply to make 8 are 4 and 2. But that's the right answer because they also add up to make 6. Like 8 and 1, 8 times 1 is 8, but 8 plus 1, not 6. So that would be wrong. All right, now let's take a look at the second one here. Remember, you always want to see if there's a common factor that you can take out. And here, there's a 2. So we're going to take out the 2. And then if you look, you see that thing right there? Hmm. Yep, that's what it was. And we just found out that that x squared plus 6x plus 8 equaled x plus 2 times x plus 4. So this is going to be 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 4. Next one, all you can do is take out a common multiple of 5x, and that's all you can do on this one. And the reason I threw this in here is because students forget about this as soon as they start trying to figure out how to factor with, well, what we're going to be doing in this lesson. So you can't ever forget. This thing in red right here is a big, big deal. Always look to see if you can take out a common factor first. Now, the two numbers that multiply to negative 30 and the same two numbers that add to negative 7, well, that would be 3 and negative 10. And of course, you could put P minus 10 and P plus 3. However, the 10's got to stay negative and the P has to be positive. And the reason that would work is because you can change the order of multiplication without changing its value. The thing you have to ask yourself, whenever A equals 1 and we're being asked to factor, is we have to ask ourselves what two numbers multiply to make C and the same two numbers add to make B. And we do it in that order. You don't figure out what adds to make 3 and then figure out if there's anything there that multiplies to make 40. There are far more things that add to make a negative 3 than there are that multiply to make a negative 40. So again, back to this. I want this to make sense to you because, well, this is kind of how it works. M times N will equal C when you multiply this whole thing out. And when you distribute and combine like terms, what you end up with is you end up with M times X and N times X. And those are going to be like terms. They're going to combine together to make this number B. So let's see how that is. Here, it's two numbers that multiply to 40 and add to negative 3 would be negative 8 and positive 5. Let's take a look and see that that's true. I'm going to go ahead and distribute. This x is going to be multiplying by x plus 5, and this negative 8 is also going to be multiplying by x plus 5. When you combine like terms, these two right here make a negative 3. That's why this is correct. Now, you might just use FOIL, and FOIL is fine. It's a good shortcut. But this is how distributing polynomials always works. It doesn't matter if they're binomials or not. And I'm not completely hating on FOIL because when we have A as a number other than 1, we are going to use FOIL a lot to help us think backwards about how the multiplication happened. Anyway, the two numbers that multiply to 20, 4 and 5. 4 plus 5 is 9. Hey, this is all going just fantastic and great, right? Multiply these two together, that's what you get. 4x plus 5x is 9x. 4 times 5 is 20. We're golden. So this is all going fantastic. What happens when you can't figure it out. 
And that happens quite often. And as soon as somebody tells you, you feel like an idiot. You're like, oh, why didn't I get that to begin with? But don't feel that way. It, it Sometimes the numbers just kind of escape you. So I'd like to help you with a way that, well, think something you can do if you get stuck. So what I do is I make a chart like this. And what goes right here in the middle is the C term. Well, for both of these, the C is 8. All right. Now, uh, in this middle column right here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to factor C. Right. This is the number. These are the pairs of numbers that multiply to eight. And and over here, if C was positive, like for this one, all I'd have to do is add these factors. One plus eight is nine. Two plus four is six. You see, um, for this problem over here, I would actually subtract these factors. But don't worry about the sign. Just the difference of eight and one is seven, and the difference of well, four and two is, is two. I don't know if you realize, but what we're looking for is we're looking for pairs of numbers that multiply to eight and add to something. Well, here are all of the pairs of numbers that multiply to eight, and in this one chart, what they add to and what their differences are. Well, this is gonna give us, all we gotta do is just look for the B term and we're done. So on this one right here, this is asking what two numbers multiply to eight, two and four, and the same two numbers add to six, it's right there. So our answer is X plus two times X plus four. Whereas the other one over here, it's a little trickier because it's a negative, you see? So I'm not sure which one is which. I know that a negative times a positive is negative. So these are different signs. Whenever C is negative, the two factors are different signs. Whenever A is positive, they're the same sign. They're not always positive, they're the same sign. They're either both negative or both positive. This right here is gonna tell us how we figure out which sign goes where. Since this is negative, I would have to have a negative four and a positive two because when I would add those two together, well, this number's bigger and I'd be left with negative two left over. Now we could check it right here. This is negative four X, this is positive two X, and do you see? Those weren't too bad. But if you ever get stuck, you could use that chart. You can always use that chart. If things are easy for you, you don't need to. In fact, I wouldn't use that chart unless I got stuck. So let's take a look at, at how to use that chart though because you will get stuck. All right, so x squared minus 13x plus 12. See, 12 goes here. We go ahead and factor it. On the left, we add them all, and on the right, we subtract them. We subtract the factors. Now, for this problem alone, we would only need to do this column, but I'm gonna do several others with negatives. So let's go ahead and take a look. We are looking for a pair of factors that multiply to 12, and the same to add to 13. This means they're the same sign, the factors are, but they add up to make a negative, so they're both negative. All right. So again, this is a big deal. It's a big clue. You look at that C term. If it's positive, your factors are the same sign. If this is positive and this is negative, then both terms are negative. If this is positive and that's positive, then they're both going to be positive. If this is negative, you can't figure it out. You don't know which one is which, but you know one's positive and one's negative, and you'll have to kind of experiment with the numbers as they come up, as they come along to figure out what goes where. All right, let's take a look at the next one. X squared minus 4X minus 12. Hmm. Well, this is subtraction, so I'm looking for the difference of two numbers that multiply to 12 and make 4, and well, there you go. So the thing you got to be careful of, though, is the bigger number is going to be negative again because negative 6 plus 2 would give you a negative 4. If this was a positive 4, the 6 would be positive and the 2 would be negative. Okay, another one, x squared plus 8x plus 12. So this says we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to eight. Well, that's six and two again, except here, they're both gonna be positive. Last one, x squared plus x minus 12. Looking for two numbers that multiply to 12, whose difference, and I know they're different signs because of a negative, two numbers multiply together to make a negative, they're different signs. Well, that would be three and four right here. So this is gonna be x plus three times Sorry, I misspoke. This is going to be x plus 4 times x minus 3. What about, this is going to be our last one, what about something like this? You see, it's not that the second term is b. The coefficient of x to the power of 1 is b. So this is actually b right here, 0. So what this is really asking us is what two numbers multiply to negative 36 and add to 0. So that would be x plus 6 times x minus 6. Now, factoring quadratics is a big topic, 
especially if you're a freshman in Algebra 1. This is something you're going to be using for a long time, no matter what your academic career holds in store. So I hope this has been helpful for you. I hope it's given you a foundation and that you're going to be ready to learn the more complicated things that come next. If it has, you could definitely click like and share it, and you could subscribe to my channel for more great videos on, well, I hope it was great, anyway, other great videos on uh, factoring, and visit my website, thebeardedmathman.com. Anyway, thanks for watching.